In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your code by fixing 10 common Unity mistakes. So we have this very simple scene where there is just a player that can move, enemies are spawned, and the player shoots at them. Alright, let's start our code review by opening the player class. The first thing we notice is that all these variables are public, and it seems that the reason is just to show them in the inspector. Why is it bad though? Well, public means that any class can access and modify the health, which can lead to spaghetti code and bugs. Also, if you work in a team, this can create confusion for others. If I access the player, all public field will be suggested by the IntelliSense. The fix is very simple. Mark the variable as private and add the serialize field attribute to show it in the inspector. By keeping it private, you make it clear that it cannot be modified by other classes. All right, let's continue. Here, I see a get component operation but that is fine because it's done once in start. However, what bothers me is that we check if the component is null, then we print an error message, and then we even add the missing component. Some devs love adding null checks, thinking it makes the code safer. However, this kind of overkill null check can add noise to the code, making it harder to read and to understand. There are two solutions for this one. The first one is to add a require component attribute on the player class, this way, when you add the player script to an object, Unity will automatically add that component. Also, you cannot delete it, as the player requires it. Now, we can safely do our get component operation, and we don't need the null check anymore. The second solution is even simpler. Make the character controller visible in the inspector with serialized field, and assign the reference in the editor. Now we can remove all this and it's done. If you forget to reference the component, and it will happen, it's fine because you will get an error in the console telling you exactly what's missing. I personally always prefer to assign reference in the editor because, you know, this way it's literally zero performance cost at runtime and no extra code needed. All right, moving on. The next one is on the first line in update. Let's see what this is dead boolean is about. We can see that it's set when the player dies after the health goes below zero. We can see it's used in a few places which tend to happen with boolean. Here we only have one, but they can quickly add up, trust me. Why is creating a boolean bad in this case? Well, it adds unnecessary logic to your code, and it could lead to bugs where the health is above zero, but this boolean is not reset, leading to weird situation where you could be alive and dead at the same time. So how do we fix this? Well, if we like the is dead concept, we can keep it, and actually define it using something useful, like a health comparison. Now we can simply delete this useless boolean and all the logic that relates to it. Less code and less bugs. The next one is pretty easy to spot. This player class is doing way too much. It's handling the movement, the shooting and the ability logic. As much as you can, it's important to make sure classes have only one job. Keeping everything in one class is not great because you will have a lot of line of codes in one file which is harder to maintain and to understand. Also, if you use version control, this increases the risk of conflict as many people can work on a single file. And finally, it makes your code less reusable. Imagine we want a weapon system that can be used by different players or enemies. It can't just be just here in the player class. So how do we fix this? Well, it's very easy. You simply create a class for each of these parts and move the logic over there. Now the player can simply hold the reference to them. Not only that, other classes can also use them as well. Let's continue. So because of our previous refactor, the shoot method should not be here anymore, as it is in the weapon class. However, to make it easier to review everything in a single file, I have moved back everything in the player class. Now let's go into the shoot method. We can read from this comment that this whole logic is to find the closest enemy. This method is probably called often, as you can expect in a game like this. Therefore, it might be good to avoid the method vectortree.distance in this logic. Why is it bad though? Well, because this method computes the magnitude of the vector, which contains a square root operation, and this could affect performances. How do we fix it? Well, it's actually very simple. Instead of using vectortree.distance, that computes the magnitude, let's just use the square magnitude. The logic is the same, but we are removing a square root operation. We can do this here because we don't really need the actual distance, we just need a comparison of distances. 
The next mistake is also in this method. In order to compute the distance on the x and z axis, we are setting the enemy y position to zero. It makes sense for a game, as we don't want to be influenced by the y value. The thing is, you probably want to set the y value of a vector to zero many times. It's actually very useful. So why is it bad to keep it like this? Well, first, if we want to flatten a vector, we don't want to have to write these two lines of code every time. Also, I find it harder to read. So how do we fix this? Well, we can move this logic in an extension method. C Sharp makes it extremely easy to do it. We just make a static class. You can name it however you like, but it's commonly called utils or utilities. Then you can make a static method that takes in a vector tree with the prefix this and returns a vector tree. Now we can call it as an extension method. This is a simple example, but you can make extension methods for literally any components, and you can reuse those utilities across many games. All right, let's continue. So here, it looks like we are spawning a projectile. Everything looks fine, but wait a second, is that a get component? Actually, instantiating a game object followed by a get component is the most common thing I see in projects. So why is it bad? Well, in a frequently called method, this can have an impact on performances, and it's also doing an extra step for no reason. In most cases, we actually want to instantiate an instance of our class, not a game object. So how do we fix this? Well, instead of instantiating a game object, let's instantiate the class we want. In this case, projectile. Now to do this, the reference must match this class, and the prefab reference in the inspector must have a projectile script attached to its root. So you might need to go back in the inspector and re-reference it. Now we can happily get rid of this useless get component. It's clearer and more performant. We are not done yet with this method. In the next three lines, we see that we set various fields of the projectile right after instantiating it. The only reason we can do that is because these fields are public. But remember, we want to avoid public fields. Therefore, we want to avoid setting a class field from outside a class. Why is it bad? Well, it breaks the single responsibility principle. I will try to explain it with an analogy that was taught to me many years ago. Let's imagine that I want you to write a copy of a book. Is it better if I hold the book and read it to you out loud? Or is it better if I give you the book and you read it for yourself? So what does it mean in this case? Well, let's first go to the projectile class and make those fields private. Then let's create a public initialize method. You can call in anything you want, but I personally like init because it's short. Now this method will accept the parameters needed to initialize a projectile, and then it will assign it itself. Now in the player class, we can simply call this method and pass it the parameters. All right, so it seems this next method destroys the closest enemy. Wait a second, I recognize this logic. It's the same code we saw before in the shoot method. I know what happened here, the developer probably copy pasted the code. Why is it bad? Well first, it makes the code hard to maintain. We just improved the code before, and to apply those changes here, we would need to copy paste again. And I only use this method two times, but what if I use it all over my game? Second, the code is less reliable because similar logic is not centralized in a single point. And this is the source of many bugs, trust me. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to extract the logic in a single method. In this case, it can even be static, so we can add it to our utils class. Note that in a real game, you would have different utilities class in different namespaces. Now, both methods, shoot and destroy closest enemy, can call this method. All right, let's find the last mistake. Something is still bothering me. The shoot method is called shoot, but really it's doing two things. It's finding the closest enemy and then shooting at it. Why is it bad? Well, it's confusing, because there is hidden logic not described by the name of the method. A method should really do only one thing. What is the fix? Well, we can simply move the getClosestEnemy out of the shoot method, then pass that enemy to the shoot method. Finally, we can also rename it to shoot at, so it's much clearer. Alright guys, that's it for this video. If you learned something or just enjoyed this code review, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of those. See you next time.